আমি অনলাইন আছি হ্যাঁ ওকে 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 দিয়ে রেডি টু স্টার্ট ওকে গুড আফটারনুন एवरीवन এন্ড वेलकम टू अनदर session of a web lecture uh, in the web lecture series by Shurendranath College for Women. Uh, my name is Autoshi Bhattacharya and I am a faculty of Shurendranath College for Women. And I'm also a research scholar uh, from, a, from, I'm doing my uh, research from Guru Jambeshwar University of uh, Science and Technology, Hisar. Uh, we have discussed about uh, uh, various topics starting from you know uh, introduction to research to digital media development communication and then uh, uh, recent topics uh, like you know sports journalism photojournalism we touched about, upon uh, media surveillance and all uh, all uh, very pertinent uh, issues so here today i am in this web lecture uh, i'm going to talk about media control news as an institution of uh, power and social control mm. so uh, our power is at the center of what we create and what we destroy we use our power to control or to attempt to control uh, you know we uh, we uh, an outcome it's normally our power is an outcome of a conversation uh, sometimes we have some authority or over our friends uh, we can you know easily influence some of our friends through the mode of uh, conversation and uh, we even exert powers on our enemies so uh, we we wish to control action of others similarly media control uh, is a common practice um, of news construction of news institutions representations that occur across media outlets and mediums as a mean to justify and enforce elements of social control through this uh, exercise or articulation function of the press uh, we um, we hope to you know we in this web lecture i hope to uh, get in uh, you know share with you better understanding how press you know works in close connection uh, between you know uh, dominant social constructs and how press actually influence uh, or exerts power on us so uh, i'll just with all your permission i'll just share my uh, ppt for today i hope the uh, the presentation is visible yes it is visible thank you jyoti uh, so today for the purpose of this uh, web lecture um i have basically uh, taken content uh, based my content on these two books uh, media control and media persuasion and propaganda uh i will before you know starting uh, on or before uh, uh, discussing on how uh, media is controlling uh, public opinion or our lives uh, i want to share uh, uh, with all of you the you know um, various um, researchers communication theorists and uh, their ideas about propaganda persuasion and you know media control so starting from uh, mcluhan uh, who who says uh, you know medium is message message so he uh, 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 said that you know ours is the first age in which many thousands you know best trained individual minds have been you know they are making full time business to get inside the public mind mm, and uh, Uh, they are uh, manipulating it they are controlling uh, uh, our minds and the main um, motive is to generate uh, you know heat uh, to 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 not maybe sometimes you know uh, lighting enlightening uh, individuals becomes a secondary you know uh, option and uh, generating heat becomes the first one through in manipulation persuasion and all such techniques next will uh, uh you know uh, there 
even there is uh, you know uh, sometimes you know how media has through its various content moved from persuasion towards propaganda uh, is uh, a very important uh, concept to uh, study when we uh, uh, talk about media control uh, persuasion yeah yes we influence people's mind through persuasion uh, we have as a journalism students we have studied about various theories you know uh, rhetoric form of uh, classical rhetoric form of communication on all where the art of persuasion is talked about uh, but it it moves towards propaganda when when we consciously mislead you know or exploits the beliefs values and attitudes for the propag uh, propagandists benefit uh, so uh, you know there is a line between persuasion and propaganda so propaganda uh, isn't propaganda can be done very uh, easily with the use of language the conversation as i said earlier so it has been used extensively uh, by different media outlets in different contents of media which we come across in our daily lives so here you know how the, the picture i can i i uh, got this picture from uh, like uh, google so um, uh, the cartoonist uh, you know shows how media is tailoring uh, the minds of individuals how we as an individual have diverse opinion about a certain you know um, issue or event at hand but when we are uh, exposing ourselves our minds are exposed to the media messages on a daily basis how we all are you know uh, can turning into um, a, um, you know a hypnotized a, in, in individual we are just uh, watching or understanding what media you know needs us to or we are just watching or we are just behaving as uh, you know media wants us to so they are controlling us uh, here uh, when we talked about marshall mcluhan we we'll, i will next talk about uh, stuart hall Uh, his model of encoding and decoding uh, he he uh, talks about in his model of encoding and decoding he says that you know there is a sender who transmit transmits the messages through a suitable medium and there is a receiver who decodes the message and he understands it but the entire transmission the the transmission of the message is influenced uh, by a different um, you know um, it is it is influenced by different um, different aspects are there which is influencing it um for example uh, you know technical infrastructure uh, we have uh, when as a mass comm students or we know that there are some barriers to the communication as well there is some noise to the communication process as well but the message gets influenced even understanding decoding of the messages they are also getting influenced by the technical infra the infrastructure the medium which is used for transmitting the messages uh, we uh, normally uh, we do not you we do not uh, you know construct uh, the message similarly for all the mediums one message through television will be imparted in a different way one message through radio will be imparted and formed in a different way so um, the technical infrastructure influences the transmission messages um how you know uh, our ability to decode the message and even media's you know uh, skill of encoding the message uh, the relations of the production of the entire message it also affects the uh, the message the influence the message even uh, the shared framework frameworks of knowledge uh, our mutual understanding or the understanding between the sender and the re receiver or encoder or decoder that also uh, you know influence the message so ideology and power relations influence the message encoding and decoding mm, uh, antonio gramsci we cannot uh, move ahead without talking about uh, the concept of uh, you know hegemony given by uh, antonio uh, gramsci so he talked about that dominant he talked about the dominant ideology of society uh, he talked about that sometimes how you know uh, media uh, we we just sometimes accepts 
something from the media uh, as it is we do not sometimes public do not you know counter uh, count you know give any uh, opposition and they accept uh, as to be very natural way to uh, live so uh, but you know uh, the di the di uh, dominant ideology is given by the uh, power elites in the society um uh when uh, there are you know uh, different ways different uh, um, researchers who who talk about how media messages are turned into objects of power uh, sometimes uh, through the uh, types of content uh, there the media uh, plays dividing practices you know subjects are divided you know either within themselves or from others by a process of exclusion which we will get to know in 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 the you know coming slides which we will dis discuss how marginalization happens you know how alternative viewpoints are sometimes suppressed to uh, you know give way to the dominant ideology or uh, which is the maybe the ideology of the power elites in the society uh then the second way how uh, they are you know exerting power is uh, some classification has been done uh, some uh, the narratives the the way of storytelling by the use of storytelling uh, they make one concept they hear you know i'm talking about the press media has the power uh, you know through the power of storytelling they can um give a particular classification a particular you know representation to any uh, you, you know a member or a group and uh, uh, they give uh, and that, that they give a very scientific kind of classification for example somebody who looks like this or wears something like this or goes or or his behavior is like is classified and given a term you know to to make him or her separate from the you know what is the not what is normal and you know terming that you know that person community or group uh, you know becomes uh, abnormal so media gives this kind of uh, scientific classification that media has the power to give such kind of classificated cl classification do's and don'ts of the society what is normal and what is abnormal and subject subjectification you know they uh, they will similar to scientific classification they will with certain logic with some certain arguments um, they will uh, classify identify uh, you know some something as you know left right conservative progressive atheist and also so people also you know they they accept this this classification uh, and their mind is seasoned uh, into these kind of classifications uh moving on uh, forward to walter lipman he says that thank i'll just read what he you know uh, has said uh, related to this concept thanks to modern media systems most people experience the world at a distance instead of seeing things as they occur we experience events as pictures in our hands heads so here i will turn from the uh, till now i talked about researchers and uh, communication theorists talking about the power of media for persuasion propaganda, propaganda um, and the control the way they can control our mind or the audience's mind and now i will move on with walter lipman's word i'll move on to the ways how uh, media is controlling our mind so here we get a hint from walter lipman's words that uh, media creates pictures in our heads um, so to the use of compelling pictures uh, media is controlling the mind of people and which is beyond our comprehension so we are not for example some any of any event which is happening in any part of the world we are not we are not actually physically present there uh, to see what is happening we are uh, looking at all such events from a distance from the eyes of media from the you know from radio from internet so we are always getting an edited version we know how the uh, process the news process from gathering to the final uh, production happens uh, 
so we experience events as pictures in our heads um, sometimes it is simplified sometimes oversimplified sometimes compressed framed and a lot of times stereotype there are lots of research which has been done on framing agenda setting gatekeeping or stereotyping so the mediated pictures uh, merge with our own images and memories and we are actually creating a pseudo environment we we are sometimes we do not know uh, for you know many years uh, what the reality is so it creates a pseudo environment so as i was saying uh, you know images uh, there is you know, the, the word icon you know it came uh, you know broadly it is uh, it came from the uh, concept which broadly talks about images or objects that gain power from what they represent you know we sometimes uh, uh, see something but what they represent uh, makes the meaning uh, you know we make out meaning and, and and a single icon can have different uh, meaning and connotations to different people and they can be interpreted in, dif in different way by different people so images can move us deeply and beyond our comprehension when in in the morning when we see a newspaper the pictures in the newspaper or when we you know when we switch on our tv sets and the images which we see you know be, even before what has happened we can make out you know we can understand we can you know um, make out some meaning of the images even if the you know sound of the video or tv is you know uh, load so we see before we understand before understanding the entire thing we if we see a a, a broken bridge and you know um, uh, so we 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 make a mental image we understand so um images have a persuasive power beyond you know uh, beyond our comprehension so um and the book which i talked about you know where i have taken uh, my content from media control it takes examples from us media to build upon uh, their you know logic and reasoning so uh, they uh, said uh, that how september 11 attacks and the images which came uh, uh, you know before the detailed report and all how they were you know uh, the, you know they they were used as a campaign uh, for shock and all the nation was mourning and anybody who would see the powerful visual messages you know they they know uh, the and even after so many years if we uh, see the the same visuals um, uh, we are you know taken back to that time so uh, governments you know uh, the 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 same book you know he says that uh, the the author there says that governments use uh, uh, lots of uh, techniques propaganda techniques to control the mind of the audiences similarly through these images you know they create a threat of terrorism to justify uh, state surveillance you know crowd control and rights removal and uh, from 911 attack onwards uh, there were you know a series of uh, uh, terror attacks uh, throughout the world and everywhere uh, uh, the politic politicians have used all sides of that spectacle of terrorism to provoke fear and win elections uh, we will talk about fear later on but we know that you know uh, fear when people are in fear then they you know accept authority so uh, government uh, or politicians they use this uh, to their advantage always here i have uh, used uh, one uh, newspaper um, image which is from the marbingham news and there uh, it, it it talks about the uh, the bombings and they have used uh, uh, the boston bombings and they have one one event and they have used a number of uh, images uh, a series of images and which have uh, a lot of impact on viewers uh, or the readers mind uh, so the first as i said is through the use of compelling images the second is engineering consent um um sometimes the the most important out of in uh, engineering you know out of uh, all the techniques 
of engineering consent one example is statistical polling uh, the the critics of uh, uh, statistical polling polls and surveys they always fear they always believe that more than uh, measuring public opinion the statistical polling you know or surveys they create the public opinion uh, uh, so uh, when 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 in a survey or in a poll carefully worded questions are made uh, and you know they encourage somehow the desired responses and which then in turn is again announced as in, in evidence of consensus so maybe through the use of uh, you know uh, carefully intelligent questions uh, we can uh, bring about the desired results um, so through polling and market surveys sometimes the public are made commodity to be sold uh, and some publics are you know uh, they are they get influenced okay this is the because everybody we we know when we talk about spiral of silence even everybody want to be part uh, of uh, of a group uh, we want uh, we don't we always fear social isolation that's what spiral of silence theory also says uh, that we are as an individual it assumes uh, elizabeth noel newman's spiral of silence assumes that people are constantly you know uh, judging others uh, viewpoints towards a particular issue and nobody wants to be in a in a, a minority viewpoint everybody want to join the bandwagon so um, uh, sometimes you know when uh, polls and surveys show certain kind of uh, uh, results uh, so everybody thinks that to be the right thing to do so uh, as i said that polling sometimes create uh, public opinion rather than measuring it so neutrality of uh, the polling organization is a significant question and why the client is you know even uh, organizing a uh, polling or why the, the what are the reasons for polling that is also an important question to ask an important thing to ponder on upon the second thing uh, and uh, the the third thing actually is advertising and consumer culture we know the uh, the in, the importance the powerful role of advertising in our uh, in our society uh, so advertising strategies have evolved uh, and uh, from sometimes they provide uh, straightforward descriptions of products and services sometimes they give reason why sometimes entertainment sometimes so they uh, um, use variety of tactics techniques um, to uh, to you know call consumers to action uh, so uh, we uh, know how advertising has always been uh, a very uh, powerful tool uh, to persuade uh, to to uh, influence to uh, make people aware uh, the 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 voice and and now the talking about the advertising messages uh, as earlier the priests managers or educators or experts they they whatever they used to say they had a voice of command even the politicians have a voice of command the same voice of command can be seen in the advertising messages you know the the words they are used are very condensed the language is very direct and assertive and uh, people uh, you know actually uh, the, the the call to action at the end you know he sub uh, either subscribe to this or you know purchase this and uh, we know there are lots of appeals which are used in advertising so with the use of all these appeals uh, uh, or you know uh, psychological um, analysis of the audiences through various research techniques um, advertising has very successfully uh, able to control the public uh, opinion the public mind so uh, advertising and propaganda have always been very important instruments of domination uh, 
so when we talk about propaganda we 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 should uh, definitely talk about noam chomsky's propaganda model uh, uh, although i will not uh, go very uh, deep go in detail on the propaganda model but we know that uh, there are five filters through which uh, a, a news normally passes through or how these five things you know shape the media messages the communication messages of uh, of the press so uh, you know uh, we know that there is a concentration of ownership media monopolizing media you know conglomeration and uh, we can see uh, there is uh, how powerful um, you know uh, people or organizations with you know profit orientation whose profit you know profit orientation is their prime uh, motive so they are working in hand in hand uh, with the press and mm, press is somehow you know just propagating their ideologies uh, media even you know media funding we know that uh, advertising revenue is a major um, source of reven revenue for uh, media outlets rather than uh, sales or subscriptions so uh, media outlets have to uh, publish or uh, promote uh, the messages according to their lines of you know thought somehow even uh, sourcing the messages we uh, get the media the source of you know media messages they are uh, largely depending on official press releases official press conferences and official sources uh, which uh, influence uh the content of the message to a great extent uh we have in this context i'll just uh talk about a uh, talk uh, about i want to mention about the media during the you know um, the cold war vietnam war uh, and how the media has evolved over the time mm. if there the, how how television you know played a very important role in changing the outcomes of a war so there also when reporters uh, you know uh, they 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 realized that whatever official sources are the data the facts the figures which are uh, um, you know given by the official sources when the reporters they uh, found out that they are very different from what the reality is they decided to go to vietnam and report from the ground and um, which you know which uh, which brought to uh, the notice lot of uh, things lot of discrepancies so sourcing becomes a, a, a one you know important factor in influencing the content uh, of the messages of media content uh, then there are uh, there is always you know a fear of common enemy always uh, when something some uh, some events uh, cannot be explained or it it it, it um, works against uh, the the power elites their ideologies uh, they manage to uh, somehow you know distract the people towards a common enemy or uh, normally uh, terrorism or or or, or some other uh, such things uh, where you know uh, and and where you know collective forgetting happens which we will uh, we will get to see the next thing is the use of journalistic imaginative power uh, by media uh, by by journal the journalist uh, the journalistic imaginating imaginative powers is basically the power of journalists to uh, to make a news uh, you know to elevate a news to myth and uh, uh, build a lot of uh, you know information uh, imaginary information and finally which the viewers the audience the readers imagine that to be real the uh, the, the and normally those imaginations which which press is building around a particular event is the explanation from the you know authorities authority and they they they, they claim that this is from certain kind of authority so um, 
uh, sometimes in these kind of uh, imaginative uh, explanations alternative explanations um, they are marginalized and uh, we we are left with only you know the explanations we are left to believe only the explanations given by the uh, dominant you know journalistic ideology uh, here i have i will give you uh, i'll talk about one example here uh, which talks about the news coverage of uh, the Miami uh, zombie, uh, where a dark-skinned man uh, had attacked a light-skinned homeless man uh, near the Miami uh, uh, Herald's former downtown location, and the, the 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 news report talks about how you know on a very busy road, uh, a person uh, named Rudy Eugene he was. And then his uh, his his full description was given, and how he uh, you know he bit into another you know obviously the light skinned person and destroying seventy percent of his face. Now this was the uh, initial the first report uh, in the newspaper in the U.S. newspaper. Uh, what followed was very you know remarkable to to know and uh, you know it struck me and it was very funny how all the press you know uh, gave up the follow up follow up stories that uh, eugene was a, a zombie because he looked in a certain way and uh, how racial identities were at, at, you know uh, given to uh, eugene uh, he is from a voodoo community or some something like that uh, which which has come which is inhabiting miami uh, so uh, that more explanations why he did it why uh, a person rudy eugene uh, you know bit into a, a fair skin man so there were lots of explanations for that in the media uh, so some said that they, he was on drugs he smoked before he did that. he did that he was obviously a zombie and then uh, he he practiced some kind of you know uh, uh, some kind of you know i can i i would say religious activities that you know uh, encourage that so his activities were um uh, related to his uh, racial you know identity uh, his racial maybe appearance not even nobody you know uh, um cared about to find out uh, you know in, uh, the exact truth they were just you know uh, talking about whatever would suit the 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 um, dominant ideology but later on it was found out from the medical reports as well you know uh, the medical reports kept on saying that there even even you know people from uh, that particular racial com uh, community or racial um, class they were uh, there were other things like cannibalism and all. They were also related to that person that he was, you know, a cannibal. That's why he bit into his face and all. But later on, it was uh, found out, and in even the subsequent medical examinations also, you know, approved that there was no, you know, human flesh with uh, in his stomach, or he there was no traces of drugs in his bloodstream. The family of Eugene, they they, uh, you know, cleared it that what uh, religion they were practicing and they had no uh, no relationship with the particular you know uh, race which which was being referred to in the newspapers so uh, but the follow up and alternative explanations which were later on you know given they were uh, they never got you know place in the news stories uh, so uh, we hear you know from this example we saw how uh, you know just the first part that uh, you know even even a medical people said that there is no such virus which can prove that a person can be you know converted into zombie or something like that but the first um, the news report the first thing that uh, wo that stayed in the mind of people second thing how, the author of this book, uh, he, uh, he found out is that uh, there was no newspaper which talked about mental state or mental mental illness 
of Eugene at that time. Uh, nobody cared about that, uh, about the mental state, the mental health, because uh, at that time when this uh, um, incident happened in US, mental health and mental uh, state uh, was, or even depression was not a proper uh, topic to talk about in press uh, during that time or in 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 it did not according to the uh, the media or the people the dominant class it was not according to the dominant ideology it did not match it and uh, uh, they had no proper explanations uh, into this you know uh, concept of uh, a person uh, you know um, going through depression or uh, being in a uh, a negative state of mind or ill ill health ill mental health they were not he was not in a good health so uh, media has a um, um, huge imaginative power through which uh, uh, you know we it is controlling the mind of the people Press uh, must always match the dominant cultural and social norms we get to know here. And, uh, you know, journalists are to maintain, you know, they will be legitimate, uh, they will be um, true, uh, they will be appropriate only if they match the dominant cultural and social norms. So uh, media also to maintain their position of power, uh, always match their contents according to the dominant cultural and social norms. Uh, as I said, heavily officialized news reports from authorities you know, who have uh, a very good nexus with uh, you know, uh, good government and corporate collaborations, uh, they uh, frame public conscious with the, with the use of media and we can see that. These two concepts, like gatekeeping and agenda setting, is not is nothing new. Uh, how media frames or sets uh, things to be uh, the happenings of a day to be important, and uh, how me uh, the messages uh, of the media outlets passes through different uh, gates, passes through different phases to um, become the final product. And at each of the gate, at each of the filtering process, the message is actually influenced by cultural, economic, and human interactions. So uh, gatekeeping, uh, sometimes we feel that the person who is at desk is doing the gatekeeping, but the gatekeeping starts from the very uh, initially uh, initial stage when the reporter actually, you know, thinks something to be newsworthy and uh, uh, picks up that uh, subject to write a, a report on or to capture it in, in his uh, camera. So gatekeeping process starts from the very beginning. And uh, media actually influences, you know, tells people what they should think about. about. They feed, as, is, as in the picture we can see, they feed the people with news. Mm. So all the uh, diversity of opinion or the judgment, the, 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 the cap capability of judging which one is important or not, sometimes is lost in this process. Uh, the next thing, how media uh, creates or controls uh, our mind is by the, play, the, the practice of news placemaking. Now, what is news placemaking? Uh, dominant interpretation of geography you know, uh, used to enforce public policies. We must have, you, you might have heard a lot of times some area of a particular country or a particular state are uh, how they are marked as marginalized. They are uh, marked on the map as in some different color. Mm, how racial segregation is done, uh, uh, you know, on, on, on through the news reports. So whenever we come, go through the um, 
columns of a newspaper when we get to know about some event and we uh, see the name of the place where it actually happened so there are dominant interpretations of geography as well so uh, through the through so uh, you know we the, the press you know they make the actions localized and it uh, you know um, it it has an influence over people's mind it has a lot of you know how the people are interpreting it the messages uh, it gets influenced uh, for example uh, in 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 us uh, media it was uh, it was seen that you know uh, how things you know how any act of uh, patriotism or nationalism something for the country even if it is performed by you know drunks unemployed or criminals it becomes acceptable if only only if uh, that uh, you know that um, that action is done by an individual who is a white person so if he does even if he he, he has lots of negative person you know things attached to his uh, character but if he is white and he is doing something you know so it 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 becomes a dedication to the national pride and the opposite uh, uh, is also there in the us media so um, this news place making it encourages social banishment it acts uh, it secludes certain particular social groups for, from participating in community spaces uh, it it gives them you know it it uh, makes uh, uh, unavailable you know they it makes them um, uh, kind of Uh, ostracized from the society uh, they are, they they are given certain social role, roles maybe through the uh, practice of news make, uh, news place making also um, when uh, news of a certain place is uh, given in the columns of a newspaper it carries certain cultural and social influences which you know shape dominant perception perceptions of that place of that geography um just just uh, the second point is just same as this the first one meanings of a place at the center of news coverage related to social issues influence future meaning of those places and issues in media remembrance when something has happened here when a follow up story will come up uh, the first story will always uh, been you know it will be remembered it will influence the future you know meanings associated with that place as well mm, also uh, we can see that uh some somehow the the media uh, the press they 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 the, the place for example if if a place has previously seen some you know criminal activities and all so it gives explanation for police violence and military rule uh, to be you know uh, to be uh, a normal thing over there even uh, it serves as a rationalization for increased press surveillance or in that place so um, um when through the use of uh, news place making uh, sometimes uh, according to the you know it it gives way to dominant you know ideological explanation for removal of a particular type of people from particular places you know uh, so uh, these the news place making gives ground to gives uh, explanation to all such further happenings in that place news as cultural distraction uh, media uh, helps in cultural distraction through three uh, ways which is you know mentioned here controversy conspiracy and collective forgetting now what is controversy um press institute like whatever you know press or you know they 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 want to exert media control uh, by uh, confusing people sometimes by by uh, you know on any particular event uh, based on a, you know focusing on a particular event they will um, try to always um, stop the alternative explanations by you know uh, naming them as a conspiracy by a very uh, by an opposition group or sometimes um, they they create uh, controversial uh, 
issues and uh, you know they they give press uh, they do the they they focus of the focus of press cover coverage they it delegitimizes any interrogation of power el elite you cannot you are not in a position uh, to uh, ask questions or raise your voice right uh, against the status quo so uh, through the they will uh, they will uh, you know the press sometimes with the use of controversy and conspiracy theory marginalize the alternative voices it uh, actually allows press and its public to to become distracted from you know asking any other questions so uh, regarding this concept i found this uh, cartoon uh, very useful when when you know uh, how how media also you know helps how uh, political parties uh, you know use this uh, conspiracy theory and controversy theory so um, collective forgetting uh, is another phenomena where uh, you know media remember by forgetting you know they they, they by the process of marginalizing by marginalization or by exclusion of information uh, media uh, exclude the alternative explanations as as if it has never happened or sometimes um, you know through the use of memory on one particular day if an event has happened you know maybe 10 20 years before but on you know every year on that particular day media will uh, definitely make it a point um, to remind people that this happened uh, 10 years before and this may happen in future as well and similarly if some alternative explanations are there so then media will uh, you know um, very um, intentionally will uh, remove such alternative explanations from the news content as if it never happened so uh, the people you know they tend to collectively forget about certain things and memorize about certain things through the messages that media provides us so collective forgetting is an effort to align collective identity and cultural con continuance based around approved ideas and voices of yesterday today and tomorrow so through the use of collective forgetting and collective you know memory the media memory somehow the dominant ideologies uh, are always promoted and propagated through media we have discussed about fear you know even before uh, when i was talking a few sl slides back that world is full of something to fear and uh, we should always be in fear of uh, things especially you know the terrorism and um, such stories they are um, build upon the idea of or the emotion of fear so uh, the the people are always in a sense of conflict between what what the the they consider real um what they think that it is natural uh, as told to them by the power elite and then they are confused they there is a always conflict with some alternative presentation of reality right but that alternative presentations as they are you know uh, always um, tried to be stopped uh, muted by the um, power elites so uh, the people are left in confusion and they again turn to uh, the same medium uh, or you know the same uh, the, the the prior position of what they were thinking the reality is so the public turns to them once again and the power elite offers them with all the answers so there is an ideological circle a news media distract audiences through cultural work of covering news as per the demands and interest of media's own economic and cultural positions and the pressures applied from collaborating and unifying social institutions and actors so basically uh, they are uh, you know um, always promoting the um, dominant ideologies uh in our uh, in our previous you know in one of our previous web lecture we uh, uh we uh, discussed about uh, 
about the media surveillance right so there is always a social surveillance by the media that is happening media waiting media watching and media shaming uh, so uh, very briefly as we are going out of time i will very briefly uh, say that media waiting is the process of fear construction related to why what might happen you are always always given new stories related to you know okay, something is happening near you so now you know you may be the next one also um uh, the press watch uh, you know key th this is happening this is you know this is going upwards this is going down downwards and if some alternative uh, views are coming uh, or some you know somebody so then that person will be termed as you know uh, they they will be media shamed uh, they will be you know also um, uh, you you know denigrated by by the you know contents and all so uh, um, as we uh, i i hope i could you know clear uh, to you to some extent how media exerts uh, you know its power so there is actually no divide uh, between the power elite and the press rather information is created captured and disseminated all within the shared ideological community of the press and police and they are identified based upon their shared practices uh so um, with that i will end today's uh, lecture and uh, i will thank uh, um i have some thanks giving to uh, do uh a special thanks to uh, our hod uh, dr uma shankar pande sir uh, for giving me this opportunity for suggesting me uh, uh, this topic uh, and a very uh, relevant and there are actually a lot of things uh, to talk about and uh, i don't uh, know how to sum up it, it within uh, uh, within one hour but thanks for encouraging me to take up this topic and talk about this he actually made uh, you know gave us a pla platform thanks for giving us such a platform and uh, th i will uh, thank uh, shraboni mukhopadhyay ma'am uh, shottobroto paul sir ushashire sen gupta ma'am uh, konka majumdar nag ma'am and uh, jyoti shah and ananya sen for their uh, always constant support and encouragement uh, uh, and uh, so thank you sir uh, over to you please add if i have missed anything uh, thank you so much atoshi for this brilliant presentation this is not a very easy topic and you did full justice to it you've done a massive research on that and which is very visible and it's very important that uh, we have these conversations on, on platforms like this so very very happy that our webinar series has uh, shaped up like this it's it's uh, really wonderful the kind of uh, topics we've been dealing with the kind of preparations uh, all my colleagues are making for presenting here it's really wonderful and uh, over the last few months we've had a number of uh, web lectures on this i'm sure we'll continue with that in the new year in 2021 just 19 days left for 2020 and for 21 to come so uh, uh, we are just at the end of this uh, uh, year and uh, despite all the other official and uh, academic and administrative work that all my colleagues uh, have to put through uh, you know the, these web lectures are really very very uh, useful and astounding and it has uh, uh, you know led students also to uh, participate in these debates and all which is which is a, a very very uh, good thing to happen uh, i take this opportunity to thank again all my colleagues atoshi has already done that but i must thank atoshi and thank uh, shottobroto uh, sir uh, ushoshi shraboni uh, konka madam uh, uh, jyoti onanna and everybody else everybody at the college they've been extremely helpful and uh, we have been uh, on this google meet platform for quite a few months and we'll continue with that uh, in future as well thank you for this brilliant presentation and all the hard work it's really uh, very helpful and uh, i'm sure all our other colleagues will also come up with uh, we have some very interesting uh, web lectures lined up it's only because of the examinations that uh, uh, we are not doing it uh, for the next uh, two weeks i guess but we'll be back with a lot more uh, in, in the coming uh, weeks 
Otoshi, do you have anything else to say or any of our uh, faculty members? No, Otoshi has always been very brilliant about the presentation, be it presenting thing or uh, being moderating. She's absolutely brilliant. Thanks, Otoshi. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Any, anybody else has anything to say? So we'll be putting it up on YouTube very soon, and it will be there for all our students and scholars and everybody else. Thank you, students, for joining. Uh, I'm sure, I hope everybody has uh, filled up the uh, feedback link. Make sure you fill it properly. You write your name and the email correctly, so that's how you'll get your certificate. Thank you again, Otoshi, and all our colleagues for this uh, uh, brilliant uh, web lecture series. And we'll come back again very soon. Thank you, everybody. Thanks.